Hey Squishies, back again with another vlog. This is Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Season 2, Episode 3, Star on Wheels, and Fetch. Mm, this is a fun couple episodes. Uh, significantly less heavy, more wacky than the last couple. Not that uh, if we're to propose heavy versus wacky as a spectrum, uh, Star's usually pretty close to the wacky end, but it's been three-fourths wacky, one-fourth heavy the last couple episodes, and now it's back to more like 95% wack wacky. Mm. So, first episode was Star learning to ride a bike, which uh, was actually kind of in a fun episode for me to watch, brought back some memories. Uh, I did not learn to ride a bike until I was, uh, 19. Um, I, you know, my family was poor growing up, and I just never had a bike. Uh, so I didn't learn to ride one until, you know, in college, I lived a little ways off campus and rode my bike in to school. Uh, so it was kind of interesting seeing, you know, because normally when you see kids learning to ride a bike, they're like five. As so you get like the training wheels and the graduating up and so forth. But, you know, training wheels are really mostly for small kids. Adults usually have enough balance. They don't really need that stage. Or even like teenagers, usually. Uh, so we get Teenage Star learning pretty much the way I did. Although, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, nobody held back at all for me. I just kind of fell a few times until I learned to balance. Um, but, of course, it's a story I think I've seen a couple other places do before, usually with smaller kids, where letting go so that they can bike on their own causes the kid to, you know, distrust the parent, or in this case, Marco, who did that. Um, which isn't completely unreasonable. At the same time, you know, how many times have they thought evil together? She still doesn't trust him. Like, but that star, she, you know, acts very much on the spur of the moment. Uh, not a ton to say about that episode or that segment. Uh, I am pretty sure that Star's helmet, red with the yellow star in the middle, um, was a reference to Steven Universe, which is cute. Uh, I like it when uh, shows kind of do those little shout-outs to each other in small ways, you know? Um, just like a cute little acknowledgement. Mm. And... You know, the whole thing with the goat, the invisible goat, was pretty funny. Although, you know, that's actually how you know that the goat isn't, is real and not a product of belief, I guess, is that it doesn't always show up. You know, the very fact that Marco faceplants at the end says that it wasn't something, some kind of magic of his own, that it was just an invisible goat there. Um, which is silly, but it's pretty typical Starverse silliness. Mm. One kind of wonders what the goat was doing the rest of the time. Uh, a lot of Oscar in this one. He's a fun character. Um, I've noticed, like, so far this season, there's actually been... Like, it's funny because there was none in the first episode. The first episode was all Star and Ludo. But since then, Star has gotten very little focus. Um, like, the first segment of the second episode, although it was more or less about Star's anxieties, it was following Marco. Uh, the second segment was just straight up about Marco. And then this episode, like, 
Star is being her usual wacky self. It's Marco going on the adventure to chase her. Um, there just hasn't been a ton of Star. And I'd like to see more of her. On the other hand, she is kind of a one-note character most of the time. So I can see why it would be easier to write episodes where she's basically a force of nature that Marco has to deal with. Um, as Fetch ultimately was. That's Fetch. Uh, the second segment was, if, it, excuse me, if anything even sillier, it was... Uh, I'm sorry, no. The first segment was not Fetch. The second segment is Fetch. The first segment was Star on Wheels. In Fetch, things get even sillier because you've got the extra-dimensional talking dog that just wants to be a mindless Earth dog. Which, I mean, I can kind of understand. Uh, there, there's always that desire to turn your brain off, you know? Uh, we put a lot of effort into it as a culture. You know, that's kind of what TV is for, for adults. Uh, it's gotten a lot smarter in the last uh, decade or so. But ultimately still, it's there to be kind of brainless entertainment. Or something like, you know, big summer blockbuster movies or the overwhelming majority of video games. They're, they're there mostly to help you turn your brain off and stop worrying for five minutes because we're a culture that runs on caffeine and anxiety. Um, that is what it is. So there's, there's this attraction in... Might just switch your brain off for a while. To be honest, you know, Sapience maybe wasn't a great plan. There's this idea uh, called the Fermi Paradox, which is basically if intelligence is a thing that evolves relatively easily, why is no one out there? And there's a lot of different theories on why that would be. One of them is, oh, well, actually, intelligence doesn't evolve. It doesn't evolve that easily. And, you know, there's maybe one intelligent civilization every 5,000 light years. And so we just haven't been able to make contact with any of the others. Another one is that there's some reason that intelligent civilizations don't make contact with one another. Or that something destroys them, or so on and so forth. And, frankly, I think, at least based on our sample of one, which is not a good sample, what it really comes down to is that sapience is not evolutionarily really a good path to take. Because we are living in what is referred to as the Anthropocene or Capitalocene extinction. It is a major extinction event. Uh, if I remember correctly, it is the sixth in the history of life on Earth. Mm. And we've wiped out a massive proportion of these species on this planet in the last, just the last couple of centuries. Um, we, in other words, have had roughly the same impact on this planet as a major meteoric impact has. Given that, you can kind of see why sapient life would be rare in the rest of the universe, because it evolves, trashes its own ecosystem, dies out, and when the ecosystem puts itself back together again, either intelligence doesn't evolve or it gets trashed. So ecosystems themselves evolve in the direction of not having sapient life. Mm. So I would not at all be surprised to find a universe, you know, if somehow we ever, ever manage to get out there, which we won't live that long, but if somehow we did, I would not at all be surprised to find space teeming with life, maybe even teeming with ruins, probably not, um, but teeming with life but no one to talk to. That's really probably the way to bet. 
That's a weird place to go from an episode about a talking dog that wants to be stupid. But, what can you do? It was a weird episode. Um, how did the dog, like, where did the dog even come from? It came, it went searching for a dimension where dogs are not intelligent. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but when you think about it, I think that's kind of what makes Marco and Star's friendship work. Is Star is weird and fun and energetic and at times, like sometimes he has to worry about her, but at times Marco can just stop worrying and go along for the ride. Um, which maybe isn't the most flattering comparison for Marco, but you know, uh, he's not a pet, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I think part of what makes his friendship with Star work is that he provides some much needed breaks and she provides some much needed energy. Uh, yeah. Good pair of episodes. I enjoyed it. Definitely enjoying being back with this show. And I'll see you all next time. Bye! Hope you all enjoyed that. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want some more videos right away, you can hop over to my Patreon and see them there. Got other goodies there, blog posts, ability to commission videos. Feel free to check it out. Bye.